Looking for a way to add absolutely cool sound effects like this to your next project? Well, stick around because it's about to get interesting. Today on the DIY Maker, we're going to take a ordinary soldering iron, some solder, a pair of clippers, and a vise and transform it into a way to make absolutely amazing sound effects for your next microcontroller project. Now, <clears throat> Scott gives us a, a really ample supply of documentation, a really good schematic and a parts layout. And here's an excellent, a professionally made PCB and a parts kit. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get all these parts out, kind of get them sorted. You know, I like my caps with my caps and my resistors with my resistors. But that's just me. You do you. I lay them out on the part sheet just so I don't have to look for them and do the color code again. Because as my eyes have gotten older, I need some pretty good glasses in order to see color codes on eighth watt resistors. <clears throat> but we're going to start populating the board. And one thing I want to point out is that I, I, I made some mistakes when I populated this board. I used to always do kits where I would put all the parts on first and then solder. And that was partly due to my OCD. Now what I've realized as I've gotten older and wiser is that you really just want to do a couple of parts at a time. That way you're not fighting this forest of leads on the other side of the board when you go to solder it. It makes the soldering process so much more enjoyable. So if you're looking for some tips on kit building, don't put all the parts in in one process and then solder. Do take your time. And when you're putting these sockets in, this really bit me. Because when I first put this together, I actually had one of the legs on one of the IC sockets folded under the body of the socket. So it didn't penetrate the board and it didn't get uh, soldered when I soldered the board. So I couldn't figure out why the project wouldn't work when I got finished. The pro tip here, do a little bit of work, put a couple of parts on and then solder them, trim the leads off and then do a few more. It'll be a much more enjoyable process. I think this is actually where I, I folded that leg under on the IC. Um, it was really frustrating trying to find that. I, and I actually found it because I, I was so frustrated trying to diagnose it. I was actually doing continuity from the from the sockets to the back of the board and that's when I found it. But anyway, we're going to get uh, some of the interface parts in here. This is one of the LEDs. This is another area that's a little bit weak on the board and it doesn't really help you identify which way the LEDs go. I needed my loop in order to see the artwork for this. So um, a tip to Scott would be to give us a little bit more visual cue to which way the LEDs go. Show that flat really clearly um, for us with older eyes. But I got through it. I got it done. Um, I didn't have to desolder them. And now I'm putting the pots on and I do fold these legs out when I put them in just so I'm not chasing them around. There probably is enough friction where you don't have to do that, but I, I like it to be pretty robust, probably too robust. Anyway, here we go. We've got the board pretty much assembled and now we need to get it soldered. And this is my new favorite tool, this little soldering uh, vise right here. I'll put a link to it in the in the description and the pinned comment because I found it to be really, really the perfect tool for getting just the right alignment and the right tension on the board. You can lock it in place with these knobs when you're done. And it provides a really, really great way to keep that work right up in your face and right at the focal point of my glasses, which was really nice. But anyway, uh, we're going to solder this up. And I'm not going to take you through the drudgery of every single joint on this. I'm just going to highlight some of the more challenging areas. Um, when I'm doing sockets, I tend to get a couple of tacks on them and then do the rest later. But here I'm trimming those LEDs off and getting those leads out of the way. But yeah, don't, don't do the whole forest of leads approach. Um, do a couple components, trim them off. And I would work on opposite ends of the board so that they're not conflicting with each other. So put a part, you know, uh, on the bottom, put a part on the top, do those first, and then progress that way. 
Now this is a this is a pro tip here. Put the pin the pin headers in the Arduino. So we're going to put those in, and that's going to form like a, a fixture for soldering these in place. So we don't have to worry about alignment. So we're going to push them in on the Arduino side. We're going to pop this circuit board out of the vise, and we're going to attach the Arduino to the to the board with the PCB side of those header pin headers. And what that's going to do is maintain the perfect alignment and spacing for all of these pins. Once you're sure you have this together correctly, just give it a good uh, overall visual inspection and make sure that everything is engaged properly. But now we can get to the solder joints on the top side of the board for the headers and get those get those tacked. And that's what I do here. I, I, I do two solder joints on each set of headers just to kind of lock them down uh, and lock in their alignment so that when I do the rest, I don't really have to think about it. This is uh, now done and we're going to pop this board apart and finish our solder work. <clears throat> Again, this vise is super, super handy. I was really happy with it both as a filming tool and as an assembly tool. So we're going to get to work, finish up the soldering, and then check it again to the board just to make sure we didn't goof anything up and everything is okay. And it seems to work just fine. We've got good fit up, and it's all good to go. So if you bought this pre-assembled, this is what you'd see, the fully assembled experimenting board and the Arduino Uno. And now let's get this all brought together. Okay, so we've got our... Soundgen Z demo board fully assembled, populated with a Soundgen Z chip, and it also has a little audio amplifier on board as well, and some input devices we can use. It's got four potentiometers, four switches, and two LEDs that we can actually control with the Soundgen Z on top of being able to create an enormous tapestry of sound effects for our projects, whether they be robots, um, other DIY electronic projects. It's, it's so much fun to use this stuff in creative ways. I once used a variant of this chip to create a small device to scare the heck out of my wife. And basically what it was was an ultrasonic sensor that would detect when she came into, uh, into the kitchen and then it would address her by name in this strange mechanical voice. And uh, she was working nights at the time. So she got home. It was still dark out in the morning. And uh, she walks in the kitchen and this thing starts jacking at her. And she's absolutely got a kick out of it. But, uh, you know, this is the kind of stuff that you can use to add a whole level of sound creativity to your projects. And they don't have to be robots. They can be just about anything. I mean, here's one that, that's going to demonstrate being used on an Arduino Uno, which is about as basic as you get. But you could use this on any number of common microcontroller platforms. Um, also notable here is my speaker. I, I designed this speaker, and I will put the link to the 3D file for free on printables.com and also to the driver, which I thought was a really nice driver for the money. Uh, not very expensive, but definitely has a great, uh, a great tonality to it, as you're going to hear in a minute. Because the first thing we're going to do now is we're going to marry this Sound Gen Z experimenter board to the Arduino. Make sure all your pins are lined up, and then press them together. <laughs> Doesn't get much easier than that. Then we're going to plug in the audio. And the next thing to do is to introduce the USB B connector. You can see that we've got lights on this Uno. One thing I'd like to mention on the uh, Arduino Uno. Um, in order for you to experiment with this board using your PC, 
uh, to create different sounds and experiment, you will need to load some code on your Arduino. And basically, I, I call it a shovel app. What it does is it links this USB connection from your PC um, to the Arduino, which does a conversion between the serial output and I2C. I2C is the interface standard for the Sound Gen Z. So this just acts like an intermediary between your PC and this board. Once the chip is programmed, you don't need the Arduino anymore. You could just toggle this with anything you want. But in this example, we do need the Arduino Uno. And uh, we are ready to go here. The only thing we don't have is volume. So let's give it some of that. Is that not a cool sound effect? This sound effect was actually developed by Scott Savage. And uh, it was one of the nicest ones. I, I, I was playing around with the development environment and I came up with a bunch of really, um, really interesting sounds. But that one is the it's just got this creamy texture to it in an audio way. Um, and it sounds like a 1950s UFO movie sound effect. I absolutely loved it. In the next episode of our look at the um, offerings from speechchips.com, we're going to take a look at a, a chip called the Votrax, and we're also going to explore using the uh, interface and the design environment for the Sound Gen Z on the PC a little more and kind of see what other kind of noises we can come up with. So do be sure to definitely subscribe to the DIY Maker uh, on YouTube so that you don't miss a thing. Uh, this has been a heck of a lot of fun to mess around with. And uh, let's get another dose of that UFO. Imagine a, a, a nice Halloween display where you've got a crashed UFO. And every time somebody walks up to it, this sound effect comes on. Oh, that would be so much fun. Anyway... Uh, just wanted to share with you the Sound Gen Z from Scott Savage and, uh, and give you a heads up on how easy it can be to get involved in making some amazing sound effects for your next project. Thanks for watching the DIY Maker. Be sure to subscribe, like the video, share this content. It really helps us grow as a channel and helps us get the word out. And it doesn't cost you a dime to do that. There will be some links to uh, to this product, this product, uh, the speaker driver that I used here, and some of them are affiliate links and they do help support the channel. Without any further ado, um, we'll get ready for the next episode on the DIY Maker where we look at how to program your Sound Gen Z and also a look at their newest product, which is the Votrax. That gets really interesting. Thanks, everybody. Shutterstock Music